Hi guys, welcome back. My name is C.S. Shantanu Mandariya. Welcome you all to the particular subject that is called as GMRC, which means Governance, Risk Management, Compliance and Ethics. And uh, this is C.S. Professional uh, Group Number 1, one of the paper in Group Number 1. So today, being the first class, uh, we'll definitely uh, try and understand uh, in brief in uh, the fast track mode about this entire subject. And thereafter, we'll also start with this first uh, chapter itself. But before I do that, I think it will be better if I can just uh, give some of my introduction to you so that you can know me better and also you can understand that how we're going to uh, proceed in this uh, fast track batch of GMRC. So first of all, as I said, my name is uh, C.S. Shantru Mandari. So currently I'm working as a senior manager, senior manager company secretary in one of the Australian uh, based company. And I've been teaching for last uh, more than 10 years, I should say. And uh, apart from this, which you are seeing right now, this uh, particular fast track batch in English, I've already completed all the CS professional subjects detail classes in Hindi. Thereafter, I've completed all the subjects uh, fast track batch in Hindi. And now the time has come on the demand of student that we have started again, the entire, all the subjects of CS professional in English. So this will, uh, these classes will entirely be 100% in English. So those students who are from southern part of India or uh, from any location who don't understand Hindi or don't understand Hindi uh, properly, I think this is uh, the batch for them. Or in the other way, we can also say that those students who wanted to improve their English communication skills uh, can also enroll for this batch. So in this uh, fast track batch revision series, we will uh, starting from GMRC, moving towards drafting, then going to the group second consisting of SACMDD, CRIV, RCD, then moving to the group three consisting of corporate funding, MDCS, and then IBC and uh, insolvency. We'll, we'll cover it one by one all of these subjects. But first, we're going to start with uh, this class, which is of GMRC, Governance, Risk Management, Compliance and Ethics. Now. The other thing is uh, during the classes, if you feel that I'm, uh, you know, speaking too fast or too slow, then you definitely have an option depending upon which device uh, you are watching these classes. It can be mobile or an iPad, iPhone or laptop or whatsoever. You will have an option to adjust the speed. So kindly, uh, uh, you know, uh, use that option in case you feel that the speed is either too slow or too fast. Okay. <clears throat> Now let's uh, start with this uh, fast track batch. So first of all, let me explain you what is fast track batch. So in fast track batch, we're gonna complete entire uh, subject, all topics. So I'll not leave any topic. I'll complete entire topic, but as I said, it is a fast track batch. So we'll definitely uh, not be going in very much detail of every topic, but that is for sure that we're gonna complete every topic uh, step by step as given in these notes. Thereafter, after uh, referring these notes, which I think you must have got from our side through email, etc. You don't need to refer any further ICSI module or notes because if you uh, refer these things, then that is uh, sufficient in itself, right? In this uh, fast track batch, uh, we'll also cover all the amendments as applicable to you. So the amendment will also be covered. Now I think I've told everything, so it's now the time to start uh, this particular first chapter of Governance, Risk Management, Compliance and Ethics, CS Professional Group 1. Now the uh, chapter name is uh, Conceptual Framework of Corporate Governance. So basically, uh, I think it is uh, different terminologies have been given throughout the chapter or I would say different experts have come uh, come in and uh, they have given different uh, meaning of the word corporate governance. Some may have explained corporate governance in just two lines while other may have gone to the limit of even 10 lines to explain corporate governance. But I think it's a simple words in a layman language because we haven't studied anything from, from the notes yet. So if I talk about the layman language, Corporate governance is nothing but just uh, an ethical way or a legalized way or a formal way where everything is balanced right from the interest of employees to the shareholders, uh, to the board diversity, to the transparency. Everything has been done in a balanced way so that the overall uh, growth of the company or the organization or the corporation can be done in an effective way, following all the rules and regulations as applicable. Now this is one of the simplest definition. This definition I don't think so is written anywhere. It is the definition that I've just 
framed just now like few seconds before when I was talking to you about this so if you understand this then I think you have uh, understand the meaning of corporate governance also I've observed that uh, in GMRC uh, many students actually uh, get nervous because it this paper is like uh, having a lot of lots and lots of theory right lots and lots of theory and all those approaches given by different experts so my uh, suggestion because this as I said being the first class I will not repeat entire uh, uh, these things in the second class and then moving forward but being the first class I wanted to make sure that you are actually comfortable so I'm just trying to explain every bit and piece so that you can understand this uh, easily so what I was saying is that uh, I think the key to pass or to get good marks in any of these subjects is to frame the answers in your own words. So basically you have to understand the concept and then try and frame the answers in your own words. So as I said corporate governance which I have explained similarly they have also written in this notes they have also written some uh, meaning of corporate governance. Uh, where they have also used a word saying that corporate governance is essential to develop added value to the stakeholders as it ensured transparency now this is the keyword i'm sure you must have heard about keywords like during your examination or like any of the lectures many faculty must have been referring that you have to use keywords 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 now what is a keyword actually uh, i can give you an example right now so as i said like just now even underline that particular thing transparency when we talk about corporate governance, corporate governance cannot exist throughout the world or I would say uh, corporate governance will not be in existence in the entire world unless and until you have the element of transparency in it. So transparency is an economy, uh, I think in a better word or a key word. Then the other word is balanced as you have must have observed that while uh, I was giving you my version of corporate governance definition because there is no fixed definition as such. I I think used twice or even more than that the word balance so when you uh, talk about stakeholder benefit then you talk about board diversity if you talk about employee benefit and all these things in a balanced way then you are not talking about anything else but I think you are talking about corporate governance so this is how corporate governance uh, actually work and then um, there's no rule as such like you have companies act to regulate the company you have LLP you have partnership act and so on and so forth but in India and even in most of the countries of the world there's no specific legislation as to what does the corporate governance actually mean so the element would still remain the same but uh, depending upon the legal requirements uh, this definition may vary but the basic ideology or the idea behind these definitions still remain the same now if we move ahead then it says what is corporate governance so it talks about the same thing saying that corporate governance is about promoting corporate fairness transparency and accountability now when we talk about fairness uh, i think that means that you don't discriminate as i just said that uh, the employees employees should not get discriminated on the basis of their caste creed culture or gender as the case may be and similarly they should be accountable as to what they have done they should give an answer they should be answerable actually as to what they have done and why they have done it because if all these points are being touched then only the corporate uh, governance meaning or the definition can come up properly so basically corporate governance in the other word can also mean that uh, you have to follow or abide by the provision of law even if there is no law and even nobody is looking onto you for an example uh, let's say for example you uh, you want you are actually out of your home and driving your uh, car or maybe uh, uh, your bike you know? and then uh, during uh, that particular travel you encounter that there is a red light or a red signal uh, and red signal means that you have to stop but maybe it is uh, very early in the day uh, probably 5 6 pm 7 uh, sorry 5 6 or 7 am or maybe very late in the night probably 11 etc because during that there is a lot of traffic so early hours uh, in the morning and late hours in the night so when you are driving on the road you find that uh, there is a red light but then there, there is no policeman standing on the uh, red signal because if policeman watches you then he will cut your chalan and then he will send a ticket to you and you have to pay the fine so you find that the road is empty but uh, there is a red light and you are the only person on that road and uh, there is no policeman so 
if you think that nobody is watching me because there is no policeman there is no camera so nobody will bother me nobody will find me and then you actually crossed or jumped the red light then that that is wrong because ethics or corporate governance is not just like that you will follow the rules or the procedure when you been pressurized to do so you should do that voluntarily so ideally in that situation whether the policeman is there or not whether the camera is there or not or whether somebody is watching you or not it does not really matter if it is a red light as per the rule of law you have to stop the reason i'm giving this example is trying to explain you that in the end of the day you are accountable for what you are doing it does not really matter who is seeing you or who is not seeing you but you are accountable for yourself you are answerable to the society especially when you are running a big company so this has been written here and apart from that it also says that corporate governance uh, is not a new topic obviously i mean the definition will keep on evolving as we move ahead but that this is not a new thing it has been present not only in india uh, but throughout the world since many many years so that this is not a new topic it has been in existence since ages different meaning have been given by different person but as you see that in this 21st century uh, we are more dependent on technology you you have must have heard a word called as viral you know on internet various things get viral if uh, a particular organization last i think few days i was watching a video in which indigo indigo the airlines they mishandled a child and they didn't allow that child to board on the plane so the video was viral on the internet and then indigo has to apologize and all those things so the prior time like 20 years before from now was very different and now it is very different so you have to be very cautious as to what you are doing it does not really matter who is watching you and who is it watching you you should all always and always follow and abide by the rules of law this is how corporate governance is being dealt with okay so now let's uh, move on to the next topic which talks about relevance of cadbury committee in uk now cadbury committee have been asked uh, in the examination like many times i'm not saying that this will be asked in this attempt as well but it has been asked quite a few times the reason being that cadbury committee was the uh, uh, formation or one of the very very uh, initial committees that really talked about corporate governance in united kingdom so the objective of this uh, committee was to enhance the role of uh, corporate governance like they wanted uh, that this uh, committee should actually talk about more of the employee welfare thing and how to maintain good relation uh, with the clients or the customers you must have heard a word called as stakeholders so it is obviously a very different word from shareholders stakeholders is a very wider word so how to take care of the stakeholders which obviously includes your uh, customers your employees and everything and everybody who has a connection with the company be it a monetary connection or otherwise so cadbury committee actually focus on all those things because uh, they were of the view that uh, corporate governance is is not just only following rules and regulation but you also have to actually uh, take care of your employees give them uh, salaries on time give them better facilities and then listen to your customer feedback as well and then do the improvement as required so all this is a part of corporate governance so there is a line in the law that you must have uh, i'm sure heard uh, it says that we should actually try and follow uh, the law in letter as well as spirit so if you follow the law in only in letters that means what it, what it is written you are just following it without applying the sense of the mind but when you talk about to follow the law in letter and spirit that means you are also understanding that why you been doing these things and how you can make this uh, better or improvise it you also include all those things so slowly and gradually uh, initially the corporate governance framework was only restricted to employees or the internal framework then it moved to the uh, customers or the stakeholders thing and slowly and slowly will find that it will also get bigger and bigger and more and more people or the concerned persons will get in uh, included in the definition of corporate governance so apart from uh, the cadbury committee when the institute of company secretary of india have also given a definition of the corporate governance so they say that as i was just saying to you that compliance of law in true letter and spirit now i will also like to uh, mention one more thing here that uh, as i just as i just said like in the starting of this class that i am teaching this subject for the third time so you have to be very very cautious while uh, listening to my words 
and wherever you think it is required you should try and make your own notes so for example as i just said i was giving an example of red light i was just using the keyword transparency i was using the word balance just before now i was using the word to follow the law and letter and spirit now these are those keywords uh, with the help of which you can frame your sentences or you can add more and more content so don't just only watch the lectures but uh, at the time of watching or after watching whatever uh, fits your requirement try and pause the video and write few thing i'm not saying that you should write each and every word that is not possible and that is not required but wherever you think that this is a keyword and i should write then don't uh, don't actually search for the pen or pencil keep a pen pencil uh, pen pencil or whatever handy so that you can just write that particular thing at the same point of time rather than putting it for tomorrow so corporate governance as per icsi is for the um, compliance perspective or the legal perspective to follow the law as it is written also try and improvise it and do more things which are on voluntary basis like i can tell you one example uh, have you heard about tata the company tata so tata was the first company actually if i talk about in indian region then tata was the first company one of those first company i should say they should, uh, should say this way that introduced the provision of provident fund so provident fund was introduced later by the government of india but tata introduced it by themselves only so this is also a corporate governance corporate governance is not just about making profit or money or not only to serve the customer but also taking care of your employees as i use the word balance so you also have to include these things so that you can make the working environment of the work life balance much better this is what it has uh, being written in the definition given by icsi it also says that uh, corporate governance is also uh yeah it also includes the, the distribution of wealth and discharge of social responsibility for sustainable development so when we talk about social responsibility as i just said like introduction of pf uh then csr these all things definitely are the part of corporate governance so there can be many examples of corporate governance actually further moving ahead when we talk about uh, why do we really need corporate governance then it says that if you uh if you are a law abiding company then more and more investors will be attracted to you which means more and more investment will come to the company the brand value of the company will increase so uh there was a company or there was a particular person called as or there is a person i should say vijay malya that kingfisher one so if you uh, go on to the history and all those scams and all uh, apart from that you will also find that he took that kingfisher brand name to such an height that on the basis of that kingfisher brand name only bank has given him crores and millions and millions of rupees do you understand what i'm saying so company name is one thing but when you make that company or when you convert that company to a brand its value automatically get increased and that will only and only be possible if you follow this corporate governance structure so the benefit of corporate governance can be Uh, in the form of attracting more investment and obviously retaining it and obviously the second time investors should also come to you so there these are uh, the few of the advantages of the benefit of the corporate governance plus when we talk about globalization now as you know that more and more indian companies are being going out of india and more and more uh, foreign companies are being coming in india that means vice versa globalization is there so if your company is performing good in one uh, country or more than one country probably its uh, chances of getting success in the other countries would also increase so globalization um, especially as i just said during this particular class that internet or the technology uh, has grown massively right has grown massively so within fraction of second whatever ha- whatever has happened in any part of the world can be circulated in the entire world or like most of the part of the world so globalization is this only if you do a good task then definitely that can be passed from multiple people to multiple people from different geographical uh, location to different geographical location thus enhancing your brand value so you always have to make sure that whatever you say or whatever you do is actually in line with your corporate governance goals <coughs> apart from that if we uh, further talk about the benefits of uh, corporate governance then it says that it reduces the corruption because if uh, the top organization or top management is law abiding then definitely the middle and the lower order will follow the same tone so 
So I'm not saying that uh, in in an organization where 1,000 or maybe probably 100 people are working, all of them will be honest. It is, I, I think it will be a lie. It it is not practically possible. But once you see that the senior is really hardworking and you know he does not take bribe and he work honestly, he does not like corruption, then definitely it does matters. It 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 will definitely improve the working environment of the entire company. So corporate governance does not affect the company as such, but the individual also. Because once you enter an organization, you see that the people working in the organization does not accept bribe or they work with honesty. So you'll follow the same thing. But if you see that everybody is doing, uh, you know, black money thing and all those uh, corrupt practices, then automatically you'll also be inclined to that part only. This thing and then. Uh, Easy finance, you call it as easy finance or you call it as an investment, it is one and the same thing. Because if your brand value of the company is good, then definitely you will get more and more investment. Now what are the elements of the good corporate governance? Like uh, how to make a particular governance as a good governance. Now governance is like you are actually instructing the company or basically if you are a director, then you are managing the company that what should be done and what shouldn't be done. But what are those points that you should really consider before uh, framing any policy or the process? So here it is written, the first point is legislation. You have to check if there is any law that really talks about exclusively or particularly or specifically about corporate governance. If yes, then definitely we have to follow that law. But especially in a country like India where there is no specific law on the corporate governance, but corporate governance is the integral part of every law. So you have to make sure that you know whatever the law says you have to abide by that and you have, you actually understand all those policy very clearly so that it does not become ambiguous or double meaning and you know uh, things does not get jeopardized. So you also have to make sure that you understand the law and then apply accordingly. Roles and powers of the board, you must have heard about a thing that there is a, a debate or probably it has also been implemented that the role of CEO and chairman should be separated. So earlier uh, what was happening is like chairman and CEO, one person was nominated to act as a CEO and he was also acting as a chairman. So there was a confusion in the board and there was a lot of debate going on that uh, these two positions should not be handled by one person because uh, this uh, so, uh, MCA uh, basically introduced an amendment that these will be two separate positions and will be held by two different persons. So I think when I talk about this, the objective of saying this particular example was to make sure that you understand that uh, the powers, the delegation of powers uh, should be distributed evenly. Nobody should have excess of powers. So here it is also written the same that in corporate governance because governance is not one time thing and it is not one person job. It is the job of the entire organization. Obviously there, there can be uh, the uh, demarcation that the top management is responsible uh, you know for the framing policy framing and all those things while at the lower end it is responsible only for the execution so everybody is responsible for their end so it says that the power should be divided between the board in such a way that nobody should get excessive power or should do the abuse of powers so when you do uh, or when you frame a policy on corporate governance you also have to make sure that the board has been evenly divided and nobody has the excess power and everybody has those powers which they really need to do their work properly and everybody is accountable for their work. Apart from that, the board should be structured in such a way that board uh, have the necessary skills and the capacities or the capabilities to do the work or carry out the, uh, you know, the carry out the day to day necessities. Apart from that, it says board appointment, a well-defined and open procedure must be in place for reappointment as well as the appointment of the new directors. Appointment mechanism should satisfy all statutory and administrative requirements. So corporate governance, because we are talking about corporate governance, the elements. So corporate governance cannot be understood uh, like in a whole soul way. The more you read about corporate governance, the more you'll find that uh, it is a thing that you have to consider consider that every at every step at every point of time because from whatever angle you look at the company i think corporate governance framework will be present if you talk about the functioning of the company then it will also be dependent on the corporate governance if the corporate governance policy or structure is there the functioning will be according to that if the corporate governance or formation or the structure is not there the policy or the working pattern of the company will be entirely different 
So corporate governance is really an important thing and uh, I think it can be seen at every level in the organization, it does not really matter what level it is, top, middle or lower, every level. Then uh, it also says that to have the corporate governance in place, there has to be a code of conduct so that we are aware or as, as an organization, the uh, people are aware that who is responsible for which thing and who has what powers or how much powers. So all these things actually uh, when combined together form the elements of good corporate governance. So there has to be in other words I should also say that there has to be a demarcation. There has to be a demarcation as, as to who can do uh, what or you know what, when, how. This has to be clearly explained because if this is unclear then definitely corporate governance does not really matter who has drafted it. but. It cannot really work unless and until people in the organization have the understanding and the capacity to actually interpret that definition. Apart from that, you must have heard about audit committee where we talk also about the independent directors, then the chairman of the audit committee, then non-executive directors. So all those things will also be uh, need also be taken into account. We'll read all about this in details in the coming chapter as well. Then if we talk about risk management, I think uh, Risk is a thing uh, that you cannot eliminate. You can only reduce the risk. Let's say for example, you have taken an insurance policy or Mr. X has taken an insurance policy for life or he has taken his car uh, insurance policy. Now taking life insurance policy or medical insurance policy or car insurance policy does not in any way guarantee that the person will not die or he will not meet with an accident or the car will not met with an accident there is no surety but in case any of these happens and if you have an insurance then definitely the risk is less right risk is less so risk can only be covered or it can be reduced but it can never and never be eliminated altogether so you also have to make sure that you control only those risks which are controllable don't use your energy to control those risks which are uncontrollable because i think that will be of no use you will just be wasting your resources on those so I think you will have to understand uh, that depending on the type of organization, what is uh, the meaning of risk in that industry or the organization and what are the type of risk that you can and you cannot control. Then if we talk about corporate governance theories, then um, there is an agency theory and I am sure you must have uh, uh, read about the uh, contract act or the Indian contract act 1872 where we talked about the principal and the agent. So that is called as agency, that principal actually hires somebody to carry out the work, that particular person uh, is called as the agent and whatever the agent does, uh, indirectly the principal is responsible for that. So in this uh, theory, the agency theory, the same applies that uh, principal actually authorizes agent to carry out the contract and all those things and in case uh, definitely agent exceeds his authority or does something which is beyond uh, his authority then the agent will be liable but if an agent act within the authority then the principal will have the liability. So if we talk about agency theory that means for example in, in the corporate governance framework that means for example if the directors uh, do uh, things or take the decision within their authority and for some reason those, those decisions uh, were wrong or didn't happen the way they are supposed to be then directors will not be held personally liable but you must have heard a, a particular thing called as lifting of corporate veil that if the director is trying to actually uh, you know gain some personal benefit doing the work in somebody else name but actually taking the benefit in their name indirectly then definitely directors are liable but if directors are actually doing the work in day to day affairs or day to day management and if they incur a loss then definitely there is no liability of director the liability is entirely on the company so if the agent act within the authority in our case if the director act within the authority then they are not liable if the directors act beyond their authority then definitely they are liable then uh, we call it as a shareholder theory the shareholder theory works on the principle that uh, shareholder invest money in the company because they wanted to uh, grow their money or they wanted to actually have dividend uh, of the, out of the money that they have invested in the organization. So it is the responsibility of the board of directors to take the company uh, or to drive the company in such a way that the shareholder or whosoever is invested in the company actually gains good amount of return. This is how the shareholder theory actually works. So the, uh, the, basic, the directors have to make sure that they exercise their due diligence and do all those necessary things, the R&D etc. to make sure that the, the shareholders actually get the benefit out of it. 
then the stakeholder is a very diversified word which i think i have explained uh, previously during this class as well that uh, stakeholders are not just the shareholders but the suppliers but the uh, consumers but the employees as well so when you talk about the overall management or the overall uh, welfare of the organization to all those who are connected in uh, connected with the organization the direct or indirect monetary non monetary way then you are talking about the stakeholder thing steward uh, chef theory uh, in a simple words uh, so the word actually stewardship uh, means to take care so as you all know that when to, when we talk about the structure of the company we generally have talked about the directors as well as the shareholder and then the shareholders are the owners of the company while the directors are the hands and brains of the company because directors uh, manage the company in day to day management while shareholders actually are the owners of the company and uh, they don't meet quite often they may meet only maybe probably one time in the year during the meetings the general meeting so when we talk about the stewardship theory it means that uh, when the uh, shareholders or the owners are absent uh, or not available because as i said they don't actually get involved uh, in in the entire uh, year and only once in the year probably they come to the meeting and you know overview all those things so when the owners are not available or they may meet after the year it is the responsibility of the managers or the directors to manage the company in an efficient way uh, during that particular tenure so stewardship basically means to take care so the uh, the directors or the manager have to take care of the company um, as if they are the owners and they have to protect all the things that the owner actually protect if the owner was occupying the position of directors or the managers moving forward uh, you will also see that uh, <coughs> i have highlighted uh, all those who actually get involved or all those key elements actually uh, or as i said like key points which are there in a corporate governance framework because all those uh, things that are mentioned on your screen at this particular point of time without uh, the uh, combination or without the help of these i don't think so that we can achieve the uh, goal of having good corporate governance because anybody and everybody that is mentioned in, in this particular circle has a role to play and until and unless that role is being played properly we cannot achieve the objective of having the good corporate governance earlier we were also discussing about the cadbury committee uh, so if i uh, actually talk about the cadbury committee or if i actually try and elaborate that particular topic so basically in 1992 uh, this particular concept uh, came in and then uh, people actually started to talk about the corporate governance so as i just said during this particular class that corporate governance is not something that has been introduced in 1992 probably it is being there since if i talk about india we will also read the, during this chapter or towards the end of the chapter that it was also present in india in the ancient times you must have heard about all those holy books ramayana mahabharat and all those things so it was also present uh, during that particular time but nobody actually gave them a word called as uh, corporate governance i was also thinking the other day that as you know in 2020 and then uh, afterwards as well we had covid right so uh, we we actually had covid the word covid actually originated during that time and also during that particular time the word lockdown also originated so lockdown i'm not sure was in dictionary or not but it was not being used very frequently but once actually covid uh, was there lockdown was the only word that was there in television screens so maybe what i mean to say by, by all of this is that it does not really matter whether the ancient people uh, who were managing all those things were using the word corporate governance or not but they were also they that is for sure that they were following the same traits or the characteristics which a good corporate governance does so if we talk about cadbury committee uh, apart from india if we talk about cadbury committee so it talks about uh, that there is a set of principles that the company should comply before it get uh, listed itself on the london stock exchange and it also come with the element of comply or explain so either you have to follow uh, the principles that have been mentioned in the cadbury report either you comply that you follow that or if and if you don't want to follow it then you have to explain that why you are not following it that means if you are saying that you have uh, something uh, some other ideas or something better than what government has prescribed or this committee has prescribed then you are more than welcome to do that but then you have to mention as to why you are not following the government rules and then if you are not following the government's committee or the government nominated corporate governance norms then uh, you have to explain that what you are following 
is better than the government or the committee that has been approved by government their norms so i was i was just saying i think uh, in the previous uh, previous uh, page or something that in india it has been recently uh, been brought that the chairman and the ceo should be a different position when i say recently i don't mean to say that like three months or four months it's been some time now but it is not being there uh, it is not being uh, that it is like 10 years old it is definitely a new thing that has been uh, <coughs> brought into the companies act legislation but if you talk about this committee then this committee was of the view that the powers of the ceo and the chairman should be divided and the board should have at least three non executive directors and two of them should uh, be those who does not have any financial relationship yani we are also talking about we are not actually naming the thing but we are all we are talking about a related party transaction so in india if you see related party transaction there is a big big definition of that particular thing so in this definition in this committee main features on the second point it is written that board should have at least three non executive directors two of whom should have no who should have no financial or personal ties to the executive that means we are talking about related party that means you are saying out of three at least uh, 66% out of 3 two should should not should not have any financial relationship with the company that means you are talking about related party thing only so in india we call it as related party in cadbury committee they have not used the word related party but they have used a larger sentence and same as the thing with the corporate governance as i'm saying that corporate governance is not a new thing has been there from ages but different time different words have been used to explain it so this is the core of uh, cadbury committee that has been explained in this moving forward we have greenberry report now uh, now uh, if we talk about the greenberry report so as like uh, the cadbury uh, committee or the cadbury committee recommendation we were where we were focusing on the uh, separation of the role of the ceo and uh, the uh, chairman uh, in this greenberry report uh the specific actually i would say the focus or the specific attention has been given about the remuneration so the greenberry report keyword should be remuneration so in case for example because now it is only like two committees for example cadbury committee greenberry committee so it is easy to remember but then when it becomes from two but uh, from from two when it becomes to 15 or to 20 committees then you will actually get confused or it will be difficult to remember so what i suggest like as i told just now that while during watching the classes you can just write for example in this greenberry report you can mark an arrow or whatever you think is best for you you can mark an arrow for example and just mention that greenberry report talks about remuneration so because you have a central idea so if you see in the examination that there is a short note or you have to write something about greenberry report you actually have an idea that yes greenberry actually somewhere or the other relates to remuneration and then accordingly you can frame your answer further so greenberry report actually uh, talks about the direct remuneration and it says that the uh, ceo and the uh, chairman actually should have the responsibility to determine the remuneration and the remuneration should be determined keeping in mind the work that the individual do and the responsibility and the accountability they have so everything in the greenberry report entirely actually focus on the remuneration part moving on to the other report which talks about the hampel report now hampel report is basically the continuation of the cadbury and the greenberry report so first you have cadbury then you have greenberry and then when you have hampel so hampel actually uh, talks about those shortcomings or all those points which were earlier not covered in the cadbury and the greenberry report hampel actually tries and covers all those points so the hampel committee uh, as i said actually fulfills the shortcoming of the cadbury and the greenberry report and actually talks about the shareholders so if you see that uh, the previous committee the greenberg actually talks about the director remuneration that it should be compatible and you know the director should be given or remunerated fairly according to the work they do and the skill they possess while the hampel actually talks about the shareholders investment that whatever the shareholder invest it has to be safeguarded and that has to be protected and that has to be grow as well so every committee uh, is highlighting i should say i should probably say this way that every committee be it cadbury or be it greenberry or be it hampel which we have just studied actually talks about one of the specific element in the corporate go- so all all in all they are talking about corporate governance but as i said just at the start of the class and during the class as well that corporate governance is not just one word it consists of various 
various things that actually compile together and then corporate governance is being formed. So you can just try and write that uh, the Greenberry talks about the remuneration while Hampel talk about the shareholder uh, interest or the investment while the UK or you can say the Cadbury committee which actually formed in UK really talks about uh, the the composition and the separation between uh, the CEO and the chairman. So I think uh, we will keep this class to this much only and in the next class we'll start with the other topics. I hope you have understand this class being the first class. I think I have to probably five to seven minutes right at the very start of the class to explain those all those basic things. But moving forward from the second class and onwards, we'll keep on uh, you know going to the topic straight away rather than explaining uh, the very basic things which I've just explained to you. So thank you so much once again for watching. I'll see you in the next part. Till then, take care of yourself. And then, as I just said, that not only the GMRC but we also have the English fast track batch for. Uh, We'll start the English fast track batch for drafting after GMRC and then group two and then group three all subjects. So if you are interested in any of those, you can just let us know and enroll uh, for them. And uh, if you are interested or any of your friends are interested in the detail as well as a fast track batch for Hindi, then that is also available, right? Thank you so much once again for watching and I'll see you in the next class. Thank you so much.